okay, you turn your clock on and you break your trips, it makes this noise right here. Not good. Intro time. Hello, folks, this is Ken with Pro Green Ground Services. It ain't green, ain't green. And welcome to the Pro Green family. All right, guys, so out here in the beautiful forest, we got a bad issue with uh, one of my clients. Um, his pump is shot. So we turn the clock on and it would trip the breaker on this pump start relay system. So after I'd done my, all my electrical troubleshooting, came back here and uh, it was the pump, okay? That, that's usually a sign of the pump. The pump being good, the capacitors are blown or whatever, um, but usually I just go ahead and put in a new pump and but also put in preventive measures so that uh, pumps don't go bad so quick. We, you know, we're gonna protect it with a little housing and, um, and also purchase a good quality pump. So we're gonna get started, let's go, okay? And so, you see how this pump is hidden in the bushes? And uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna keep everything the way it is, but right back here, we're gonna open this up. You see all these weeds and twine and all that stuff there? We're gonna clear the area and we're going to put a new pump, obviously. And then we're going to put a little protective housing over it. So when it rains and all that, the motor is not getting slammed day in and day out with with basically the elements of the weather that's going to shorten the life of the pump all right so we're going to move this pump uh put in a new one okay and then uh protect it so we can have this customer system back up and running okay that's what we're going to do right now all right so i disconnected the wires on the pump and I turned the breaker back on and the breaker didn't trip because the wires are no longer connected to the pump, which is another sign that uh, your pump is gone, okay? And to be honest, that is a guaranteed sign, okay? My experience in doing irrigation for almost 18 years, I could tell just by the, the certain things that are doing, but for you, the homeowner, if you want to, well, if you're mechanically inclined, I'd advise to get a professional to do it for you. But uh, if you're mechanically inclined, that's how you would kind of break it down. Disconnect the wires to the pump and then turn your clock on. The pump start release should click. Make sure your breaker is back on on, okay? And that breaker will not trip because it's not, it's, it's not connected to, to a load, okay? And it'll just stay on. But once I touch that, that pump wire, to, to the um uh, to, to the pump terminals, pip, that breaker trip, pump's bad. Time to get a new pump. All right. So another point I wanted to make to you was when you touch the pump, okay, and you turn it on, uh, if that pump is hot, when I mean hot is like boiling water hot, and the breaker trips, that is a sign that your your pump is gone. Okay. And that's exactly, um, that's exactly what I did. I touched the pump, and that pump, even for a couple of seconds, this thing went from cold to boiling hot. The, uh, the uh, pump got to change, okay? So keep that in mind, too. All right, guys, so I got the pump. Uh, I got the pump housing right here to protect the pump once um, the pump is, is uh, properly installed. And I got my jack bag with all my tools and electrical equipment. Let's go ahead and put this pump together again and get this customer back up and running.
Now we're gonna bring out the fittings here. We got a two inch male adapter with uh, some Teflon. And uh, this is a necessity. You need this or else you're gonna have leaks, okay? And you won't be able to uh, tighten your fittings good. But mainly to avoid leaks, all right? So uh, make sure we have the right fittings, two inch male adapter and Teflon tape. Gotta have Teflon tape. Now here for the discharge, we have a inch and a half male adapter. The suction was two inch. Now the discharge, which is the one on top is inch and a half. Same routine. Okay. Right now I'm putting in the two inch meal adapter, all right? That goes in right there. And then once that's tightened in, we're gonna use the inch and a half to put in on the top, okay, which is the discharge, all right? And that goes right there, right there on top. That's where I put it, all right? Now we wanna just give it a little hand tighten, not too tough because these ever builds have a little plastic coating, but you wanna hand tighten them nice and snug. Okay, same thing with the top. You, you don't wanna over torque it. All right, get them nice and tight. Next step. All right, this is a two by inch and a half reducer bushing because the original suction line below is inch and a half. So we gotta reduce it. That way all the fittings can fit together, okay? That bushing goes right in there, it reduces it. That way I can add the proper fittings. Need glue, need glue. Let's start putting it together, make it look nice. Uh, one more thing, what I didn't show you was I put cleaner on the pipes, okay? Some people use primer. I use cleaner because, you know, it doesn't leave a purple mess but to each his own. Uh, but I would advise you to use a uh, purple primer or a cleaner to keep the outside coating of your pipes uh, debris free so you don't get no dirt debris up in your uh, glue wells, okay? Purple primer or cleaner. That trick you see that I just did, I put glue on the blade. Sometimes that uh, inch and a half pipe can be a little wet and my cutters won't grip. So you put a little glue on the blade, it'll bite quicker and cut through that schedule 40 nice and easy. Little plumber's trick. Now, if you go through one of my YouTube videos, I have a pump installation with these um, Everbuilt pumps, and I show you why it's important to fill it up with water first. And I also show you the wiring. So click on that video on my YouTube channel. Now, this is an inch and a half T, but it's a cross. 
you see I'll use the pressure gauge on top and on the left side uh, I'm gonna use the blow-off valve I'm gonna take it off this old pump right here and then I'm gonna put it on the T and here's the pressure gauge that I'm gonna use uh, you can't install a pump without a pressure gauge me I prefer the liquid pressure gauges they're a little more accurate they cost a little more but they're more accurate in my opinion, and they last a little longer. Okay, and you, you can just screw this right off and screw this right into the top of the T. You see, it's, it's threaded. That just screws right in. And then the blow off valve goes on the other side. Once again, Teflon. You need Teflon. Here's the blow off valve I took off. Like I said earlier uh, in my previous video, I have a YouTube uh, video where I show you the wiring in its exact detail. You can check that video out and I'll show you exactly how to hook that pump up in great detail. And here's the fitting that we're gonna use for the blow off valve. Now we're gonna cut out the grooves for the uh, pump house cover. This will help protect our pump from, like I said in the beginning of the video, from the elements of rain and all that. So we're gonna cut the grooves out so we can slide it over and uh, put it over the pump that we just installed.
we're gonna cut this last piece off and just slide it on in right over there. And everything should be nice and snug on it. And there you have it, folks.